Our top focus and we're on right now. Two Palestinian journalists have been killed in a targeted Israeli strike. The deaths of these journalists come on the heels of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's fourth visit to the region in hopes of finding a resolution to the crisis in Gaza. Well, Mustafa Thuria and Hamza Well Dadu, both employed with a major Qatar-based media house, were reportedly on an assignment when the car was hit by an alleged Israeli airstrike. A third freelance journalist traveling with them, Hazim Rajab, is said to be seriously injured. Hamza Well Dadu is the son of Gaza based war correspondent Well Al Dadu. Al Dadu, who himself was recently wounded in, an stri in, in a strike himself, and this after his wife and two other children perished earlier in Israeli bombings during the onset of the war. In heart wrenching visuals from the funeral held on Sunday, Well Al Dadu was seen mourning the loss of a third child. The world should see with their own eyes and not by Israel's eye. They have to listen and see all that's happening to the Palestinian people. What did Hamza do to them? What did this family do to them? What did the civilians of Gaza do to them? The world is blind to what's happening in the Gaza Strip. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is currently in Qatar seeking a swift resolution to the crisis, expressed deep sorrow and apologized over the incident at a presser with the Qatari Prime Minister, calling the deaths an unimaginable tragedy. I am deeply, deeply sorry for the almost unimaginable loss suffered by uh, your colleague, Al Adu. Uh, I am uh, I'm a parent myself. I can't begin to imagine the horror that he's experienced, not, not once, but now, now twice. Blinken, who is scheduled to hold talks in UAE and Saudi Arabia today, has warned that the war could metastasize across the region without conceited peace efforts. Blinken has been in Jordan and Qatar on a five-day diplomatic push to assuage tensions in the region, following negotiations in UAE and Saudi Arabia. Blinken is also scheduled to head to Israel. The U.S. Secretary of State will also be visiting the West Bank and later Egypt this week. Blinken has cautioned the Israeli officials on preventing civilian casualties in Gaza, emphasizing that Palestinians should be allowed to return to the Strip and not be pressed to leave their homes. Qatari officials are said to have discussed release of the hostages with the U.S. Secretary of State. And these negotiations come at a crucial time, following an earlier impasse which the Qatari Prime Minister has claimed was brought on by the recent killing of a top Hamas leader. Meanwhile, in Tel Aviv on Sunday, families of those abducted on October 7th, they organized a display of shoes at a seaside promenade. The relatives also held a presser event at the hostages plaza later in the day. And with the relatives who were there, they thanked the Qatari government for playing a crucial role in the releases of the hostages. The Israeli cabinet is slated to vote on the annual war budget later this week. Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich confirmed so on Sunday following a successful vote to approve $2.5 billion financial support for military reservists. Earlier in December, the Knesset approved a special wartime budget of over $8 billion to strengthen their war effort. Now, Israel's finance ministry has stated that the war is likely to cost an additional $14 billion, which may result in a near tripling of its deficit to around 6% of the GDP. Also this week, a special panel at the International Court of Justice in Hague will be conducting a hearing on allegations of genocide in Gaza against Israel. Israel has named its former Supreme Court President Heron Barak as its addition to the panel. 
South Africa, which has imposed the accusation of genocide against the nation, has also appointed an ad hoc judge to the panel, former Deputy Chief Justice Dikang Mosneki. The hearing is scheduled to be held on January 11th and 12th.